In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about metals identification. There are a wide variety of metals available industrially. Uh, for everything that I talk about here, you can find some exception. So this primarily is identifying metals that you've picked up in a scrap yard uh, or scrap somewhere. If it's a really critical piece, it's often best to go ahead and order the exact specifications of the material that you need instead of trusting uh, this type of identification. But for many components, we can just use uh, scrap pieces that we've uh, gained from other locations. So this is a general kind of idea on how to start identifying it. We're going to use two primary tools, a hand file, make sure we have a handle on it, and a magnet. This is just a little magnet taken from a, a speaker. First one we're going to look at is aluminum. And we've got some different varieties of aluminum here. With aluminum, uh, primarily you're going to look at the color. It's a little bit of a very white silver color. If we file it, one, it files very easy. You can see with just a little bit of force, I'm taking a lot of material off. Uh, it tends to be very soft and it tends to be very light. When we file it, the color will remain constant within the material and it's non-magnetic. So for the most part, you'll never find an aluminum that's magnetic. One thing that's often confusing for especially people starting out, this is a piece of stainless, which in color looks very similar. If you look closely, stainless has a little bit more of a blue tinge to it and aluminum tends to be a little whiter. Um, the big difference here is in weight. Uh, they both tend to be non-magnetic, but the stainless steel will be much heavier and much stiffer. Uh, even in a vise, I would have a hard time bending this. Most stainlesses can also be non-magnetic. They'll be a little harder to file. You can hear the high pitch as the file goes across, uh, very different than the softer aluminum. Um, in addition to just general aluminum, we have two types that we'll run into, wrought aluminum, which is rolled or, or formed, and cast aluminum that's been cast into a form. On this particular piece, uh, this one has failed under load so that you can see this little chip comes off. We have an area that's been cracked. Aluminum, when it cracks, if it has little air pockets, little bubbles in it, little crystal pieces, that's very typical of cast aluminum. The thing with cast is it tends to be more rigid. When it fails, it tends to crack and break, as opposed to wrought aluminum that tends to bend. So if I took this and struck it with a hammer, it wouldn't bend over, it would just simply break off. So, aluminum, white metal, easy to file, lightweight, non-magnetic. Stainless steel that we've talked about, a little more blue in color, heavier, non-magnetic, and harder to file. Then we move on to the second, probably most common, which is just mild steel. Uh, it's very difficult to tell in function between the different carbon contents of steel. Uh, there are, some, of course, some tests to be done to determine that, but from eyeball and field test, it's very difficult to indicate. Uh, steels will be magnetic uh, all the way up through high carbon. They will be fileable, and they'll have that nice silver color all the way through. So as I file that, you can see stays silver, doesn't change color no matter how deeply I file. You'll see two basic uh, types of steels. This is called cold rolled in that it has a fairly shiny surface from the factory. 
that's opposed to hot rolled steel that actually has a layer of what's called fire scale, which is a chemical that bonds to the outer surface. Fire scale tends to be very hard, hard to file through, hard on cutting uh, equipment, but it's still steel. It just has that dark color to it. Steels bend, but are very rigid. Um, so they come in different shapes and they tend to be about the same weight as far as density as stainless, much heavier than aluminums. In addition, we can have steels that have platings. These are all galvanized plates. So we can tell that by there's a little bit of a uh, crystalline structure on the surface. They're magnetic. They tend not to rust. Galvanizing is a plating type. If we file them, we can see a very slight color change, but it's often very hard to detect. Uh, the galvanizing tends to be a little more blue than the underlying steel. The big deal with galvanized metals, we have to be careful because the galvanizing is a zinc coating and zinc is toxic when it's burnt. So anytime we have something that's zinc coated, we never want to weld or solder uh, something like that to it unless we're in an extremely well ventilated area. This is actually a piece from a inside of a computer case that's very common to have uh, galvanized parts in it. Uh, so you may find sheet metal work that you're doing on those. Just be very careful anytime you sand or file that you're not inhaling that dust or when you get it hard. Additionally, this is a piece of steel with a cadmium coating to it. Notice how gold in color it is. However, if we file through that gold coloring, we can actually see that it's silver underneath just like regular mild steel. And these tend to be mild steel parts. The cadmium coating adds a little bit of a surface hardness to it, but primarily it's for rust inhibiting. Again, just like zinc, cadmium is a toxic metal, so anytime we heat or sand this, we want to do it with either ventilation, extremely well ventilated, or with a respirator that's rated to handle metals. It's also magnetic because the underlying material is steel. Next we come to cast iron. Cast iron is very similar to steel. It, it is an iron-based material. It will typically have this very dark coating. When filed, it'll have a slightly silver piece to it, but it'll be extremely hard. Anything cast iron is very hard, very brittle. Just like the aluminum cast we talked about earlier, when it fails, it tends to fail by cracking, not bending. So very rigid structures, uh, has a whole set of problems, hard to machine, uh, very hard on cutters, it'll dull cutters very quickly because it's very abrasive and very hard in material. Another common piece that you'll see, and by the way, cast iron is also magnetic because it is an iron-based material. Another piece that we'll tend to see are uh, coppers and bronzes. Um, this is actually a bronze bearing. Um, it's called red bronze because you notice how close to copper color that it is. Very similar. As I file it down, it'll retain that nice uh, reddish gold color. This is very common for bearings. It has a higher co uh, copper content than brasses or, or some other bronzes. Copper is non-magnetic. It tends to be fairly heavy and soft. It's easily filed. So just like our aluminum, when we file it, you can feel how easily it cuts. You can actually hear the difference. One thing with copper, we have a nice copper looking piece here. It's non-magnetic. It's about the right weight. However, when we file, we'll see the underlying color change to silver. This is actually a white metal, uh, which is very similar uh, to cast lead or um, aluminum. So it's non-magnetic, it's fairly soft, it's cast, it'll fracture with a copper plating on it. So anytime you pick up a piece of copper, it's really crucial to file through 
to make sure it's not some other base metal underneath of it. Copper is a very common uh, plating technique. In addition to that, you will have brass, which is a combination or an alloy of copper and zinc or copper and tin, brass or bronze. Just like the bearing brass we talked about earlier, it'll have a yellow color. When we file, that yellow gold will stay all the way through it. And you can see here, even though these are both in the brass bronze family, we have a fairly wide range of colors. This having more copper in it than this does. This is a little harder. Um, it has a fairly high density, non-magnetic. Um, very common material to work with. We'll see here another piece that looks brass, but a real telltale sign with this one happens to be a little bit of rust. Brass does not rust red like steel, so that's a clear indication to us that this is probably not really brass. We can also stick a magnet to it. Brass, remember, non-magnetic. So this piece is some sort of steel coated with a brass plating. And again, if we file through the brass plating, we'll see that silver color coming out.